Hi. Today I want to show you how to improve the look of your uh, views as well as where to put style sheets and where to put uh, script files and all of these things in our project. So let's get started. Okay, so so far we have the htdocs folder, we have our app folder, and that's pretty much what it is. And uh, as far as we're concerned, nothing inside the app folder should be accessible. Uh, however, things that are outside of this app folder should be accessible. Um, actually, we have not secured the app folder yet, and, and we're going to do that today as well. So what is it that we are trying to prevent here? We are trying to prevent a user from accessing say the app folder and gaining a listing of it and then accessing a file and getting it to run directly. Um, so how is it that we are going to accomplish this? What we need to do is we need to add a new file in our app folder and save it as .htaccess with two C's and two S's. And what we're gonna write in uh, as directives is options minus indexes. I'll show you what that does. It does not prevent you from running a file. However, it prevents you from listing the contents of a directory of a folder. The second directive is deny from all. which you know, works in conjunction with the options indexes to disallow you from running a file. So if you have both of them together, you can't list the contents of a folder when you don't have the correct file name, the correct URL, and you cannot run a file uh, if you do have the correct name because we're denying requests from all. Now, these files can only be run through the script which is happening as long as we enter through the entry point. Okay, so how do we add custom CSS, custom JavaScript to our application? So all we have to do is basically put it in the same folder, the same base folder as htdocs, and all these files are going to run directly. So I'm going to make a new folder, CSS, and another one. Uh, JavaScript. So a new folder, I'll just call it JS. If I put files here, they are accessible. I can run these files, right? Um, we can prove this simply by placing a new file in the JS folder. It doesn't need to be JavaScript to actually run. I can just say hello, for instance and save it as hello.txt, all right? And now if I go in my browser, I go to the JS folder, you see hello.txt is right here, all right? And now if I wanna run it, well, or load it, yes, I can. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit more, okay. So you see that these files are accessible, so they can be loaded by your browser, no problem. That's what we want for this. Okay, so what exactly are we going to accomplish with this? <clears throat> I want to make my website look better. I want to make my web application look better. I'm gonna use Bootstrap to do this. I can download Bootstrap completely place it within my uh, file folder structure if I want to, okay? Or I can just use the custom instructions uh, and load all of the sources from the um, online resources. If I click on documentation here, I can just take the starter template here and use that. And this is gonna be my preferred option. So I'm gonna select this starter template and copy it. Now, this starter template is very useful, but I certainly don't want to have to copy paste it all the time. So one thing that I like to do 
uh, with uh, Sublime is to make a, co a code snippet. You can do this by clicking on Tools, clicking on Developer, and adding a new snippet. Now, this snippet has basically C data, which is the stuff that we insert. This is the snippet we insert. And you can then set uh, a tab trigger, which defines how to trigger the snippet, how to bring it into the code. And here are placeholders for where the uh, cursor is going to appear. So let me show you how to do this, how to set this up. I just pasted in my template from uh, Bootstrap. And I'm going to take one placeholder and, you know, I'd like to use that to set the title. I'm going to paste it there. It's the placeholder is dollar one and a label. So this one is my title label. Uh, the dollar one says basically that this is the first place the cursor is going to go if I press on tab. And I'm going to place another one here. This one is going to be dollar two. And I'm going to call it heading. Heading. Great. I can remove the hello world code below. Okay. So this is my basically bootstrap template that I can use. It just loads everything off of the off of the web. It's fine to work with. Let's set the tab trigger by using tab trigger here. And I'll just call that boot. Boot for bootstrap, something short that I can use. And finally, I want to save this. So control S and I'm going to save it as boot sublime snippet. You can see that I already have this snippet done. I'll replace it. Okay, so how do we use this? Let's say I make a new file. Or I'm converting one that already exists. Let's say I'm converting my create file. Boot press tab. There you go. The whole snippet appears. So I can say create an item and press tab, go to the heading, create a new item. And I could even press, I could put a third placeholder here to make sure that my third tab appears here. So that's something that I can do. So in this case, I'm trying to modify my look for my uh, application. And I've been using a container class div and I'd like to keep on doing that. So I'm gonna modify my snippet a little bit. I see that I don't have a closing div. That's not very nice. Let's add one. There you go, slash div. Okay, I didn't have to do the whole div part. So <clears throat> uh, let's modify the boot snippet. Let's just add the div container part, just that part here. And let's add also a third location to tab into. I'm going to close that. Okay, so uh, here's my view with some bootstrap around it. Just the basic style sheet for bootstrap. No options, nothing there. This is for the create view. Let's go see how it looks. Oh, well, it looks a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's better. I see that I've made a mistake here. My first heading should be inside the container. All right, 
that makes sense. Let's fix the the boot um, snippet for that. What I can do is you're you're wondering how you would fix your your um, snippet, all right? Um, and when you make a new snippet, you are wondering where it's getting saved. You can just fake making a new one and you can go in the breadcrumb above and copy the location so that you can access this folder and then modify the snippet. Or just fake that and open it right away. So let's modify the snippet. Let's put the container so that it contains the heading, which makes sense. Save this, close it, we're done. Okay, so now let's make the view a little bit better. Let's use some classes from Bootstrap. Now you can get all of the documentation for Bootstrap. It's fairly easy. If you're looking for any topic, Bootstrap, form controls, for instance. And you're gonna get forms, all the documentation about the forms and how to build the forms correctly. Um, in Bootstrap, to do things correctly, you should have a div class form group around uh, a group of items for a form. And you should have class form control for each of the uh, inputs. So let's just copy that class here and use it so we have our input type text name everything and we want to set the class form control for this maybe you want to use single quotation marks instead that's fine they want to put the label outside i prefer to keep the input inside the label and um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a div class is equal to form group. Okay, so that's the form group that I want for this one. I want to remove the BR. I'm just going to use the div for the form group. Okay, so that's one form group. Now, the button there's a class for that as well btn for all buttons and then we can set which one of the buttons it is uh, based on its use and there's a, a few buttons to use if you look for bootstrap buttons you'll see that there's a resource for the buttons and there's different types. So depending on what you want as your button, if you want it green, red, whatever you want, primary, secondary. So depending on the look and feel of your application, use the one you want. Um, so primary and secondary could be used for say, save and cancel. And you can even, uh, you can even present the hyperlink as a button by using these classes. Okay, so let's go and do this. So I'm gonna use here, uh, for my submit action for create, I'll use btn primary. And I'm going to take my cancel link, put it inside the form. And also give it a class. Class is equal to btn, btn secondary. I'm going to save this and let's have a look. Okay, that's a different form. It looks a bit better. So I wanna create something. I wanna buy some uh, potatoes. Create, okay, I got potatoes, perfect. So my create form looks better. And uh, you know, uh, you can use Bootstrap throughout your entire site. 
So I'm gonna show you how to modify a few of the uh, different views.